In the early months of 1942, the Imperial Japanese Navy dominated the Pacific. Having dealt the American Navy a crushing defeat at Pearl Harbor and taken control of much of East Asia, they set their sights on Australia. Before such an invasion could occur, the Japanese had to destroy the remnants of the American Pacific Fleet. A plan was created to lure the American Navy into an ambush near the tiny island of Midway. They had uh, deciphered the code, so we knew they were going to hit. So we were at general quarters three days before. Just waiting. We, we knew it was going to happen, but it, it took a while to get together and start shooting each other. One day or one night, all of a sudden, general quarters is there. And you figure, this has got to be it. When they spotted these twin engine bombers coming at us, the sound of general quarters. I thought, man, I don't know how, how you're gonna make it. They're shooting at you going in, they're shooting at you. And when you leave, the zeros are after you. I don't know how you're gonna make it. Late in the morning of June 4th, 15 TBD-1 devastators of Torpedo Squadron 8 launched from USS Hornet. As they closed on the Japanese carriers, the older, slower aircraft came under attack by Japanese fighters. The torpedo bombers were no match for the legendary Zeros. Out of 30 men who left that morning, there was only one survivor. And the next morning, see the Japanese making an attack on Midway, and that's when we got the orders to meet the Japanese. Well, they met them, but they had so many zeros and they just shot us all down. I don't know if we ever made any hits or not. Anson Ernest came back, Gunner was dead, Raiderman was shot in the head, Ernest was also shot up badly. As the Japanese fighters refueled and rearmed, Three squadrons of SBD Dauntless bombers commenced their attack on the Japanese carrier force, charging down onto the startled Japanese ships. Multiple bomb hits sank three of the four Japanese carriers. And I know my pilot was below average flight entry. When he finished the drop, if he'd have pulled up, he'd have just turned his belly up to the gunners on the ship. So instead, he dropped on the, on the water, and we went under the bow of that ship. And when we come out on the other side, I looked up and saw this machine gunner on the bow of that ship starting to swing the gun around. So I sprayed him a little bit to discourage him while, while we were flying away from there. At midday, Japan's only remaining carrier launched 18 dive bombers to strike an avenging blow. USS Yorktown was hit, leaving her dead in the water. Within hours, the carrier was struck again, crippling the ship and forcing her captain to give the order to abandon ship. The uh, bombers got through, and the first bombers made a strike on Yorktown, and two bombs hit the stern, and uh, Yorktown was in dead in the water and smoking flamed very badly. Uh, they were dead in the water until about two o'clock in the afternoon, and all this time we were circling it, just in time for the torpedo bombers to come in. And they, tor the Yorktown took two torpedoes, but decided to abandon ship. A couple thousand people trying to get off of that, and they're sliding down in ropes and hangers and uh, Anyway, they could get some jumping off. Despite the damage Yorktown received, Japan's Navy had been dealt a blow from which they would never recover. With the entirety of their present carrier force destroyed, the Japanese began a general retreat with the U.S. fleet in pursuit, attacking and sinking a heavy cruiser. And we just flew a big circle around that Jap cruiser out of range of the guns, once in a while we'd turn and head in toward them to, to track some of their gunfire and uh, 
pull them away from the SBDs, and the, the two SBD squadrons just pounded the living hell out of that uh, cruiser. In fact, when we turned away to go back to the ship, I compared it to a big bathtub full of junk. That's, that's what that thing looked like. On June 6, an attempt was made to salvage Yorktown, but the effort was thwarted when a Japanese submarine found and torpedoed the carrier and the destroyer USS Hammond. Hammond broke in half and quickly sank, while Yorktown remained afloat for another 15 hours before finally rolling over and sliding below the surface. Four torpedoes were fired by the Japanese submarine and two hit the Yorktown, one hit the Hammond, and one missed, and the Hammond sank in four minutes. Now the only part of the Yorktown that you could see was the very, very bottom with the big holes in it. And within a, just a matter of minutes, it sank. And the cruisers we, that, that were there, you could hear them playing taps. And uh, all the sailors that we had picked up, the survivors, there was not a dry eye on the ship. 340 United States sailors and Marines gave their lives at the Battle of Midway. Each year, we honor their sacrifice and tell their story so that we may never forget. For a few, a few brave men, forgetting is impossible. For those few, their story is more that can ever be told. You really can't tell somebody how it feels to be in combat unless they've experienced it. Once you, you get into battle, it changes your perspective uh, on life. For quite a while, I was very cynical when I came back from the South Pacific. So many of them that we lost that day out of the squadron, and they were all friends, but a few of them were extremely close friends. I have, I guess, probably never gotten over that, that loss that day, that complete loss of people like that. You know, we knew that all of our fellow flyers were destroyed. And I felt pretty lucky that I survived. There's hardly a, a night or a day that goes by that I don't remember what happened to us. I don't feel guilty because I'm alive and many of my buddies aren't. And I don't feel bad, but I feel like God intervened on my behalf. I don't think I would change. I don't see how I could. I think I was guided by somebody bigger than me that put me here. We were fortunate and they should have won. But we lost a lot of people. There was a, absolutely no fear displayed by any any of our crew. No one was afraid.